Great job. Guys, good morning. Welcome to New Hope. Today we are uh, continuing a series that we have been intermittently uh, playing out this fall uh, on God and science. And so this morning we're going to look at uh, the God of all physics. And in particular, what does God teach us through a uh, very huge, the world's biggest ever, science experiment, the Large Hadron Collider. I'll give you more information on what that's about later on in the message, but the idea is that the same God who spoke through history in the Bible speaks today. Providentially, he holds the whole world. It all belongs to him. So this big physics experiment belongs to him. And if it belongs to him, it matters to him. And it might, in fact, be something through which God has something to say to us about who we are and who he is. What an amazing project this Large Hadron Collider is. The world's biggest science experiment ever. Protons flying around that 27-kilometer ring 11,000 times per second. Every time I say it, I can hardly fathom what that means. They say that the two beams of proton, when they collide, will generate temperatures that are more than 100,000 times hotter than the heart of the sun. I don't know if you caught that in small quantities, thank goodness, because it would be awful if the whole world exploded because of this experiment. This project alone will generate nearly 1% of the world's information production rate in the next few years. So you think about the uh, data storage and processing capacity required for that. And many of the best scientific minds from around the world will be working and are working on this, have been working on this massive experiment. Also, that we can better understand how this, our material universe, came to be and why physical reality is what it is. And if you dive into the project, or if you're familiar with it, like I've familiarized myself these past two weeks, you're blown away that humanity could even do such a thing that we are now doing, that we could conceive of and implement and bring to fruition so far successfully a project like this is truly amazing. It reminded me of something I read from Psalm 8 where the poet writes, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, God, the moon and stars which you have set in place, what are mere mortals that you are mindful of them and human beings that you care for them? And yet, you've made them a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned them with glory and honor. Which Richard Dawkins affirms when he writes, our ability to understand the universe and our position in it is one of the glories of the human species. Thank you, God, for bestowing this project and physicists and all good science upon your people, for bestowing that glory upon us. And so now we have created this huge particle accelerator to try and recreate the condition that was present a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. That first moment after which God spoke the material universe into existence. In the beginning, God created the heaven, the heavens, and the earth. And the Large Hadron Collider is trying to recreate at least a huge part, a big part, of that moment, that time, that place, that place where Nobel laureate physicist George Smoot, what he phrased as that place where we are seeing the face of God. That's what this physics experiment is doing. And I think the fact of the Large Hadron Collider and all of the scientific truth that it will produce is already showing us the face of God. And where do we see that face? I think the first place we see it 
or one obvious way we see it, is in how it's reflected in us, humanity, human beings. Physicists are, particle physicists, are made in the image of God. So God created human beings in his own image, Genesis 1 verse 27 says. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So when physicists create a machine that can recreate such a primal creation moment, they are reflecting the image of the Creator God who breathed that moment into existence so long ago, the first time. We are being like the God who made us in His image when we do something like this. We are affirming and demonstrating His creative genius and power which in some likeness kind of way God bestowed in glory upon the people that he made. That we can do this is in a sense a proof that he did this.